All right, not too many notes today um, because it's kind of like I want to stop after like like the basic operation type stuff because um, we'll do equations of vectors and that's gonna you know it's kind of like its own entity so I don't want to kind of double up two different things and then there's also the applications so we're gonna uh, kind of pretty much just finish up here and you guys have options to work on your own um, so like I said continuing from before when you were learning about your operation and different ways to write a vector and realizing there are such things as three-dimensional vectors, there is such a thing known as a unit vector. And unit vectors are parallel to, um, to a given vector. And you find that by doing this formula here. Vector u all over the magnitude of vector u. Okay? Which basically equals, you know, vector u over the square root of the magnitude of vector u. Teacher, please pardon the interruption. When you were U2 over U1. 
you two and you one represent the pieces of the actual vector that's given to you. Okay, so here's you one, here's you two. So you basically are going to divide them. Two divided by two, which is one. Tangent theta equals one. Remember, whenever we're looking for an angle, we take the. Whenever we're looking for an angle, we take the what? The inverse. What's the inverse tangent of one? In a circle. We are rounding to the nearest degree, so we're using degrees, not radians. Also, uh, yeah, let's say, yeah, yeah, two point five. But the but the one thing you do have to realize though is that when you're doing the inverse, like if you were to do that in your calculator, it wouldn't, it wouldn't give you the two point five. Uh -uh. Why not? Because the inverse of tangent. We don't talk about in this class, but you would have learned about in pre-cal, is that the inverses of sine, cosine, and tangent are bounded between uh, two inverse. Tangent is from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, which are negative 90 to positive 90 degrees, so it would have to be an angle that falls within that range. And then um, sine is the same, and cosine is 0 to pi. So it's, it's going to give you a value that is We, we did angle, but we never did like we All right. Now, to find, and you guys have the space, and I don't, so I'm going to do this first example with you guys. So now we're going to find a vector of magnitude 7 that is parallel to this particular vector. <clears throat> so the formula is, how many of y'all keep flipping back and forth, is m times. Okay, so we already know our magnitude 7 that is given to us. We're going to multiply that by 1 over the magnitude of u. The magnitude of u is going to be the square root of 2 squared plus 2 squared. And then we're going to multiply that by the vector 2i plus 2j. What's 2 squared plus 2 squared? It is 2 root 2. So right now we have 7 over 2 root 2 times 2i plus 2j. <laughs> you can, either one would be acceptable as the answer. But what you should know is that since you are multiplying this scalar by this vector, you can actually simplify it. This outside 2 can cancel out with the 2's here, okay? So then you'll basically be left with 7 over the square root of 2 times i plus j. So you could leave this as your answer, but if you did want to rationalize, then it would be 7 square root of 2 over 2 times that. Either one would be. And there's your vector that's parallel. <laughs> because we were given a, a magnitude already versus trying to recreate it. So we used the unit vector and we would uh, use that particular magnitude to find the vector that was parallel. Why do you think that you substitute this too? Okay. So, hold on. Let me interrupt because I'm going to be Okay, so we were already given this vector, the original question, okay? We were basically finding a vector that is parallel to this particular one. We weren't given any other information, like we weren't given two endpoints, we weren't given nothing, except for the fact that it is parallel to that one and it has a magnitude of seven. The formula that's on the previous page allows us to find a vector using the fact that we have a vector already and given a that formula allows us to find a vector when we were basically given one. We were not given two endpoints. Now your question was, where do you two come from? Yeah. This the, the use of two just refers to this vector. Now why is two? What's it two? Yeah. It just it's it's I don't know why that is two there, but it's basically the components of the vector. What was your question? 
when you find the cosine, you can just not find the line at all. So the magnitude multiply? Yeah, you're saying the magnitude divided by the magnitude multiply. No, the yeah. product is a, is a scalar. It's a, it's a number. It's not, it does not represent the magnitude. You divide it by the, the root product of their magnitudes, and then you take the cosine inverse to actually find the And the cosine is equal to 1. I want to add it over here. All right, so find the dot product of these two. You have u, 2 vector i minus 3 vector j, and 3 vector i plus 2 vector j. We are finding the dot product. We are not finding any angles. So I'm just kind of reinforcing this concept. Dot product is a simple, okay? And a lot of times for me personally, I don't prefer using the uniform with the i's and the j's, I like to look at them as the standard component form. It makes things a little bit easier for me. So to find the dot product, all you do is you multiply the first two components together, multiply the second two components together, and then add them. Two times three? Six. And zero. So the dot product is zero, which means that they're what? Perpendicular. between the two vectors that are given. So this is just a personal thing for me, a personal preference. It really doesn't matter. But if you're going to change them to a different type of form and you have to write your final answer, make sure that you write it in the form that was originally given, guys. Okay? So... The formula is the cosine of theta equals the dot product between the two divided by the product of their magnitude. So we have to find three different pieces of information, the dot product and the two magnitudes. So their dot product, negative 3 times 2 plus 3 times negative 4. What is that? 18. Well, no, it's actually, no, no, it's negative 3 over square root of 10. Okay, well, I'm doing it before you can tap with something fine. Yeah, I'll just do it. The magnitude of b is going to be the square root of negative 3 squared plus 3 squared, which is what? Uh, 3 squared. 3 squared 2. If this were a non-calculated problem, yes, simplify your radicals, make the numbers a little easier on yourselves, okay? So some of these ones where you are going to have to find the angle are going to be in the non-calculated section, okay? The magnitude of W is going to be 2 squared, which is 4. Negative 4 squared, which is? The square root of that is? 3 squared 5. The square root of 1 is definitely not square root of 1. Two square root of 3. as well as your application type problem.